Dakota Storm Team Weather Special, Tornadoes. I'm Mark Tucson. Each year, tornadoes kill an average of 100 people in the U.S. alone. Scientists have been working for years on ways to predict where tornadoes are may form and accurately while increasing the lead time to alert the public of the possible dangers. Dr. Theodore Fujita of the University of Chicago led the way in tornado photo analysis. Dr. Fujita is the inventor of the Fujita scale of tornado wind damage, the standard for all tornado research. The Fujita scale, or F scale, rates a tornado's intensity by the damage it inflicts on human-built structures and sometimes on vegetation. A tornado will be assigned the rating of the most severe damage to any well-built home or a comparable level of damage from an engineering analysis of other damage. The Fujita scale ratings are issued after a tornado has passed through an area, not while it's on the ground. Looking back through history, this is one of the original animations that Dr. Fujita analyzed on the Fargo tornado. He actually determined the storm was actually made up of four separate tornadoes which developed one after the other on almost overlapping paths. 1973 brought a defining moment in tornado research history. The Union City, Oklahoma tornado was the first successful official scientific tornado chase. It was an ideal creation of conditions within the range of the radar station at NSSL, the National Severe Storms Lab, with cameras in two positions filming simultaneously. Joe Golden of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, who was on the chase and behind the camera at Union City, had this to say, looking back at the event and early tornado chasing. Well, we, we've known all along, of course, that tornadoes are among the most dangerous and deadly weather phenomena on the Earth. They're very dangerous. We, we knew or we heard that there were a few individuals out there chasing in the late 1960s. It turns out that it was really uh, not until the early 1970s that we had the atmospheric tools to do a good job in storm chasing, to do it successfully and safely. You needed somebody interpreting the radar in real time for you and good radio communications. Union City was the one case that still stands out in the sense that for the first time we had well-equipped chase teams that managed to intercept the storm before the tornado formed. And with the radio communications back to the Severe Storms Laboratory Research Doppler radar, which was only 26 miles away, that coupled with the detailed photographic record of the tornado, we were able to synthesize a fairly complete three-dimensional life history, if you will, of a complete tornado life cycle for the first time. The official Fujita scale category is determined after meteorologists and engineers examine damage, ground swirl patterns, radar tracking, eyewitness testimonies, media reports, and damage imagery and sometimes photogrammetric and videogrammetric objects are taken into account, which is the measurement technology in which a three-dimensional coordinates of points on an object are determined by measurements made in two or more photographic images taken from different positions. Our understanding of tornadoes exploded in the 1970s through photogrammetry, ground damage pattern surveys, and the development of the Doppler radar. Dr. Fujita's F-scale standardized wind damage measurements for all researchers. Amateur tornado photography multiplied as scientists from the National Severe Storms Laboratory armed themselves with motion picture cameras as proven research tools. This helped researchers determine the wind speeds of tornadoes. Professor Fujita theorized that tornadoes often had multiple suction vortices surrounding the main circulation. The 1974 film proved his theory and proved that the multiple vortices do most of the tornado's damage. Those studies also showed Fujita that only about 10% of the tornado has winds over 200 miles per hour. The Union City footage helped define what we now know as the life cycle of tornadoes. This also led to the discovery of the mesocyclone and the tornado vortex signature which makes Doppler radar such a great tool for tornado warnings. Matt Crowther, the senior meteorologist for the Weather Channel in 1996, explains the differences between Doppler radar and the NEXRAD or Next Generation Radar. 
Well, Doppler radar is different from the radar we've had for the past uh, 30 years or so, like you're used to seeing on the Weather Channel. That just indicates where the precipitation is and how intense it is. But a Doppler radar tells you the wind speed and whether the precipitation echoes are moving quickly toward the radar or away from the radar. And we have a very good example over here. That's the Red Rock tornado of April 26, 1991. The green here up in the legend indicates very strong winds blowing right toward the radar site. And then you have very strong winds with the red blowing away. And right in the middle, right here, where these colors come together, is where we have the tornado vortex signature as indicated by the computer. Major tornadoes usually evolve through a series of stages. The first stage is called the dust whirl stage, where dust swirling upward from the surface marks the tornado's circulation on the ground, and a short funnel often extends downward from the thunderstorm's base. Damage during this stage is normally light. The next stage, called the organizing stage, finds the tornado increasing in intensity with an overall downward extent of the funnel. During the tornado's mature stage, damage is normally the most severe as the funnel reaches its greatest width and is almost vertical. The shrinking stage is characterized by an overall decrease in the funnel's width and an increase in the funnel's tilt and a narrowing of the damaged swath at the surface. Although the tornado may still be capable of intense and sometimes violent damage, the final stage, the decaying stage, usually finds the tornado stretched into the shape of a rope. Normally, the tornado becomes greatly contorted before it finally dissipates. Although these are the typical stages of a major tornado, minor tornadoes may evolve only through the organizing stage. Some even skip the mature stage and go directly into the decaying stage. However, when a tornado reaches its mature stage, its circulation usually stays in contact with the ground till it dissipates. When tornadoes returns, a new phase of research begins in the 1990s and storm chasing fever hits the nation like nothing before when we return on Tornadoes. Hey, camera guy, over here. Yeah, that's right, I'm a talking orange. Yeah, it's weird, but go with it. Us oranges talk a lot. Like in the morning at breakfast, we're all about get up and go, 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 and let's get to work on time for a change. In the orange bowl, hey, we're talking first and ten, and let's hustle! But when you see us on the highway, we're only saying one thing, slow down. We're all over construction zones, and that's all we're saying. So don't wind up pulp in a crash. You see me? You slow down. Listen to the orange. Hey, the orange says slow down. What are you getting so pepped up for? Big senior thesis. 20 pages, doing 14 hours, 30 minutes, and 23 seconds. Jeez. How about you? Uh, I got a couple paragraph uh, paper due on, you know, why you should take your clothes home to your parents, let them wash them instead of uh, you doing it in the dorms, you know, for my uh, intro to university living class. Sugar? Come visit Tabula Coffee House to satisfy all of your finals week preparation needs. Tabula Coffee House, the place to fuel her up. Stop in today and mention this ad and receive half off a double tall mocha. Tabula Coffee House, the place to fuel her up. <laughs>